Hi guys and welcome to Hunger Few and today we're jamming with the first fish of the day on the close in feeder and hopefully we'll get this one in and we can uh, run you through what we're doing. So I've got one on as well. What we're doing is we're fishing a method feeder, eight mil pellet, and we're fishing it really close in. Um, and what we're doing is we're setting the drag really light so then the fish can effectively just swim off that way we don't have any breakages or lose any gear or anything like that and it just allows the fish to run off but it's another way of effectively fishing your margins and we're fishing just Literally off the rod tip. Put a nice angry mirror on. And he went a few <laughs> a few pegs down he did. We know Tim but it's it's clear under all these trees, even though there is trees. Um there's there's not actually anything to to get them on so I'm just trying to get underneath the peg um, it's just sort of trees that are overhanging so as long as you sink the, the tip of your, your rod you're usually okay probably great scrap not a massive fish probably about four or five pound but they do put a great a great scrap on as you all know I, I don't have every gear on this is five pound maxima it's just all done with this lovely end zone z rod you see the bend in it there and that's that's what it is that allows me to get away with light last it's allowed to fish up to over 18 pound on this so and glenn's got a koi on next door so we're going to get this fish in and then glenn if you keep that in your net mate we'll come round to you so we'll get this in guys um it's a bit bigger than i thought actually um, and then we'll go and see Glynn's koi. Don't tell me it's that 15 pounder. Just get it unhooked mate and we'll come round and have a look. So Glynn's having a nice fight with a koi next to us, which we'll have a look at. This one's a, a bit bigger stamp than I originally thought it would actually. I'll tell you what, it's nice to get catch something on the rod. The last time I've caught something on the rod was uh, winter time when I had that them nice fish at, on locos. So catching these No I'll get it in mate, get him in. So Glenn I'm just seeing it side Glenn's got one on that's white and black spots. She looks pretty amazing. So hopefully <laughs> we'll get this one in. I thought it was nearly in and then it's uh, decided to wake up again. There's one thing if you're ever going to come to Aston Ferry, the fish fight hard and it is a bit bigger than what I thought. Probably about six pound. Maybe a shade more. It is nearly done. This is where these soft action rods come come in. It allows you to absorb the lunges, get the fish under control. There's another little tip as well. You see the, the, the rod resting on my forearm, but you see my two fingers there just sometimes aid you with just getting a bit of lift on. Because sometimes it can put a lot of strain on your shoulders, especially if you're catching a lot of fish. And just those two fingers on there just aids you in getting rid of control and a bit taking a bit of pressure off your shoulders. And he's definitely not not slowing down. We've nearly had him in net a few times, but he's uh, 
definitely putting up a new tremendous fight. And he's going again. And like I say, people some, sometimes you get people on there, oh, you need to weak, just tank your drag, tank your drag. The drag is not on super slack. End of the day, you've got five pound line here. This is where you need to be sensible with your drag. And there's plenty of pressure on this fish. There he comes. And when he's ready, he'll go in. There he is, shuffled. It's a good fish, that. A bit of back wind on. It's a nice fish. A lot bigger, in fact, than I originally thought it was. It's a hefty old fish, is that? Beautifully hooked in the corner of the mouth. That tiny little lock is just perfectly placed in there. Lovely job. A nice little 16 zuck. Let's lift him up. He's a lovely chunky fish. Let's see if he's gonna be a good boy. Hopefully. There we go. An absolute unit to start the session into the net let's get him back into the water and away he goes all right we'll jump over to glenn's and we'll have a little look at the koi all right guys so we've got glenn with a beautiful little koi he's only a little fish about three pound <laughs> but um fantastic colors on that glenn beautiful beautiful yes yeah, i've never had a koi before so that's nice that's another one isn't it to yeah. to, to the, the list of many and it's caught on exactly the same method guys so we're just going to put that down so Glyn can get a photo and uh, we'll see you soon lovely koi from Glyn there and uh, we're just going to show you how, we've, uh, how we're catching so we've got an 8mm pellet first of all and then we've got a little blend of adrenaline baits krill and I've soaked that um, just a normal method mixture and then I've had some soaked micro pellets to it as well so that's what we're uh, using and I've thrown in some four mils um, a little handful of corn and a couple of handfuls of ground baiting just in front literally off the tip of the rod and uh, it's gone away pretty sharpish so what we're using also and it is it's stinky stuff and it really is stinky stuff it proper stinks and it's um, a crayfish and make sure you get your fingers and your all your equipment anything out of the way when you spray it because it stinks so we're just getting a, spray, a little spray of that and before we do anything else we're slacking in this right off so you literally wants to be almost like a bait runner look i can't even i can barely even tighten up to it and that's how you want it you want it to be able to just pick up and swim off with it with it in close if not that's that's when we end up losing rods and reels and ta tackle and all sorts of stuff like that so all we're doing there is tightening up to it as we would normally do tips close to the water everything's to hand but mainly the drag is set like a bait runner so if you if you don't understand what a bait runner is um if you go cat fishing or barbell fishing or pike fishing um you have a bait runner reel so what that does is has usually a normal drag like um, we've got there where it's mine's a top drag um, sometimes it can be a bottom drag where you screw the bottom that will remain the same the difference is you can click on a little bar on the back and what that does is it turns it into a free spool mode and then there's another little drag usually to, to tighten that to the certain tension that you want line to play out because if you're on a river um, and there's a little bit of tow you don't you want it to not be pulling out every two minutes with the with the water coming through um, and effectively what that does is when you hook a fish it allows it to 
to swim off like if you when you watch all the carp videos and you see it scream off that's on a bait runner so that allows the fish to swim off and take line as much as it wants when you pick up the rod the fish is obviously already hooked and all you need to do is tighten your drag on the top on this on this way the way we're fishing on a normal fish on a normal bait runner you would just turn the handle once and it'd click into the normal reel mode and the the drag that ever set on the the reel but what what we're doing with this is we haven't obviously got a bait runner so we're just tightening the top of the drag till it gets to the desired um sort of drag that we want and then we're playing the fish um nice and simple really easy to do but because you're in because you're in close quarters we're effectively fishing a meter away from the the tip of the rod we don't want any any sort of we don't want it to pull pull the rod itself in but we don't also want it to break anything um especially if it's a big fish like that one um, it just allows it to run I apologies that we did miss that um but we were uh, just uh just on his first drop i didn't think we'd have a fish so early um so we didn't have the camera on but at least we got the, the fish on camera so and the koi so that's good so there has been a little bit of a calamity today we've had um uh, a gent at the other side unfortunately he had the big 15 pound koi on and lost it at the net his elastic snapped but it was weird because it wasn't really under pressure so it must have been something in the elastic or an old elastic that to, for it to snap like that it, it, very bizarre but i've been chasing it round this end of the pond um it's been towing the elastic and the and the rig which is not good um and i've got the bailiff's gaff with me to try and um l twist around the elastic when it comes to try and get it in um so you know fingers crossed we can do that but i, I have been chasing it for like an hour and a half trying to do it um but i'm just hoping that there's a there's always a chance it goes down and eats the bait i've just seen can see a, another koi there a white one um there's always a chance it can go down and grab the bait <laughs> that would be funny right guys trying to get a little bit of crisp action going on i'm moving to another fish now you saw that work perfectly now you saw perfectly like we we're saying that drag just working perfectly to this one's going wild down the left hand side Team just keeping that rod nice and low it's under all the trees not near the trees and that was a little pink wafter I don't think it's anything too massive this one but lovely little lovely little fight and I love that little pink wafter but we're only in for about a minute I reckon Angry little beast this one is. Only a baby though, I think this one. It's just all fight hard here. Honestly. Only a baby this one. What do they do? They're just they all scrap. That pink will have to take in no time to seal the deal oh he's trying to get under my peg they're crazy yeah that little waffle stick outside of his 
Come on, son. There we go. There's in the net. Nice fish. So we're going to click the back wind up and you can always just trap the butt of the rod and it's out, it's out your way so you can get everything done. And he really wanted the, the wafter straight in the gullet. Just to under that corner of the mouth. Lovely job. Always a good thing when you can reuse it. This one's only a babby. I'll try and lift him up. It's probably about three-ish pounds. I would have said this one. Three to four. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful little fish. Let's get him under there. And it's away. And we'll get back out there. I've got the bait still on. Always double check it though. When you've uh, you had a fish on, always double check your bait. With a wafter, they're quite, quite robust, so you can get away with not, not having them on. And what I did with that one is I just left it on the outside of there. On the outside of the feeder, opposed to opposed to the um, how we had it before. Just need to tighten it up a little bit. Just enough to. I'm just gonna get a little bit closer to that bush but it's a little bit precarious with the overhanging branches let's get it there we go yeah so that's just proves why you need it on there for example, you're just having a little munch on a munch on a pack of crisps and bushka, she's off. And that's what it can be, and that's why we have it on, especially when you have it on your short line. And this is why I, I have such a light rod. Um, ever since I changed to this rod um, and this line, I've really, rarely lost any fish, touch wood, he says. Um, you don't seem to bump that many fish. It's just seems to be the soft action that's, that's on it. All right, guys, that was a lovely take. And then all I've just done there is I've just added a little, just to brew a few more pellets above over the top and a few more bits of corn just to keep them keep them active and uh, within two two not even two minutes of throwing that in off she goes and the good thing about the ninjas the drag's just so easy to click on and off it's easy to adjust and you know you, you get that that bite and you can just drag, adjust your drag straight away. So just a little tip, when you are, when you can hear the fish taking line like that, no point in turning the reel. Just keep constant pressure on. And then you want to be pumping and then winding to the fish. If, the, if they're still taking line, then there's no point in reeling. That looks like another little mirror. Nice 
mirror. Get my net just ready on there. Oh, it's lovely. It's fully, fully scaled, that one. It's beautiful fish. It's fully scaled mirror. Right account of itself. So just taking the time, not pulling its head off. Letting the rod and the reel do the work. That's a lovely fish. Guys. In and out. Don't want to stab at him. Every fish counts. I don't want to stab at him as soon as I see that net is away. Loads of beans, this one. Quite a, a long fish for a small. I don't think it's an absolutely huge fish, but absolutely a long one for its size. Fully scaled, beautiful, absolutely stunning. Let's get that out of the way. What a pretty fish that is. Oops. Absolutely perfect in the corner of the mouth. Just ready to nip that hook out, I wasn't. Before he uh, kicked off about it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, let it dangle in the water because with a wafter on, there's a good chance of hooking one under his feet. So I'll try and pick this one up for you. It's about six pound or so. Lovely fish. A bit bigger than six pound. And again, another stunning, but lovely, fully scaled that one. So, beautiful fish. We'll do is put him back and we'll have a look at the rig and then we'll get back out there and see if we can have another one. Right, guys, let's have a little look at the rig and what tackle we're using. So, Daiwa Endzone Z, this is a 10 to 11 foot. Um, so it's a 10 foot at the moment, but there's an insert that you can put in to make it an 11 foot. Um, absolutely love this rod. Um, this is a 50 gram casting weight one, really nice and light, beautiful. And we've got a Ninja, uh, a Ninja Match 3000, and this is a double handled, and this is using a five pound Maxima line, which is super durable, super stretchy, very inexpensive, and just a lot, a lot of faith in it. Um, we're fishing with a Jira Banjo feeder. Um, this one is a 30 gram, doesn't need to be that heavy, um, but I want it for the size. Um, it, we're only fishing close in, but I want it to be nailed down because the line's quite tight to it and they're not getting loads and loads of liners and it's not pulling the feeder away. Now I've got a short four inch hook link 
um, and that's down to a, a size cake uh, size 16 kkmb um, with a little band on and at the moment it has a pink waffle and that's done the damage with a couple of fish now um, what I was saying for the bait is um, megabytes krill and um, like I said before we've mixed that as a normal method mix um, soaked some micros um, independently to that and then added it in and that's pretty much the mix we've got and um, at the moment I'm keeping the wafter outside of the feeder and I'm just compressing them in in a single layer like that and then I've got some 8mm pellets and some corners some other additional baits I've also got some white and orange and yellow uh, juicy fruits wafters as well as additional baits um, they're always good to have uh, variety when you're from a fishing method and then I got the stinky stuff which is the crayfish flavour and it's, it does stink it really does I'm just giving that a light, a light spray on there trust me when I say get don't get it in anywhere near your hands or anywhere near getting it on to your uh, your clothes because it stinks so we're just going to a little underarm swing that's all we want and then want to sla slacken off that um, drag so then there's nearly no drag whatsoever so it can just really easily pull and that's what we want we set it up super simple like that as you can see we're, when we're fishing um, I've got like a, a two foot plateau that I'm fishing between the end of the bush and two foot towards me so that's a nice little area that we can bait up um, and you know because there's some fish moving out there um, that we can bait up and you know we're just, just absolutely spot on oh we've got a big big old liner there um, which is inevitable with the, the direct line that we have to it um, what we'll try and do is flash the zoom back out and uh, hopefully it won't be too long until we get another pull around on the rod right guys it's another fish as soon as we put those few extra balls in as you saw me ball in a minute at the time at the same time just trying to get a few more fish moving down there and uh, away it goes just as I was throwing it in it's such a good method to, to do close in sometimes when the bites can be a little bit bizarre sometimes you get sometimes you get a lot of liners this can sometimes do the trick you know, the bait's on the on the deck just pick it up and fish is on sucked you don't really you don't strike or anything you just tighten that drag up and boom shakalaka she's on I would recommend you know, it's sort of nine, uh, nine or ten foot rod. Um, the I, I just prefer the action on a ten foot rod, to be honest. Uh, especially on even on these short, short like little off the tip chucks. I just think you get more control and just let's just prefer them. But always good to look at getting a soft action rods as so many nowadays you can get for not a lot of money you know you don't have to pay 200 quid like this one you just you can get some really good quality rods for around 50 quid even 100 quid that's a nice fish fish trying to get under it was not even a pallet so I don't know why they why they try to get under and as I hope you're enjoying the uh, the quick fire series the mini series that I'm on holiday for wife's not too happy that I'm doing a video a day but trying to film a few we've got a couple filmed today here and and also the midi review 
of the tackle of the uh, of the luggage that uh, Fish and Tackle and Bait gave us for the uh, Members Day prizing. Mm, lovely fish, lovely fish. I, I just every time I, f I, f I use this rod, I, f I forget how bloody good it is. And then just look at that action on it. It's just unreal. Bends all the way through the rod, right to the butt of the rod. Right to the butt of the rod. Absorbing those lunges. I think, I don't think it's ridiculous, but I, I think it's still a good fish, this. And just the thing with these, like, and I've said it over and over again, they just don't give up. <laughs> they just don't give up. They just really don't know when they beat. Candy corner fishery is very like that. The fish don't, just don't seem to give up. But whatever Gordon feeds them here, you know, the nice, sweet, nice clean water. And I just think they're just super fit. And that actually is a big fish. That is a double figure fish. And I just had to reassess how I'm going to get that in, in the net. Because <laughs> that's certainly not going to go in, in that way. So have a look. I've only got a little bit of my landing net handle today because I've been fishing the paste 13 metres. And I've not got a long handle, probably got about two and a half, three metres. <coughs> probably three metres, I would have said, rather than me. My bigger sections out. It's just take your time. It's been up twice now. Just the insane bend in the rod. And it's still, even though the rod looks insane. Just don't feel like it's any under any strain. I just get the red down the do and it's so hard to get up. Old in its position. And you just, you just sometimes cannot get them in net until they're just done. I'm not, I'm not about to start yanking its head off. Like I said, we're only on five pound line, Maxima. And the reason we can get away with that kind of line on these big fish is the rod. So some, some people, you know, oh, get, get, you know, just lean on it and, and reel it in. That's not what it's about. It's not what it's about for me. Enjoy the fight, just put up an amazing fight. Enjoy that. Enjoy the tackle that's we spend the money on. It's a beautiful fish that. It's a good fish. Really good fish. Definitely into double figures. Trying to get under the peg. And he's in. It's a good fish. That is a good fish to end the video on as well. Just what we want. Not more we can ask on that one. 
Oh yes, that is a cracking fish. That is well into double figures that is guys. In fact, Glenn has a scales around the corner. That might even be worthy of the scales because it's definitely the biggest fish of the day. If I can get an hand on it. Get it unhooked. He took a eight milli pellet to that one. I'll get him lifted up for you. I'm a deep net, you see, so struggle sometimes. <laughs> I'm just getting myself sorted because I've got short arms. It's a bit difficult to get my old hand under when I'm in a deep net sometimes. Is a good fish that. <laughs> now boys, that is a cracker, an absolute cracker. Let's get him weighed and we'll finish off the video. Right guys, so a nice double figure. Uh, just a, just a, on the, the 10 pound button. Um, was that one so that's a lovely fish to uh, to finish the session for and you know it's uh, as you can see it's a really really successful deadly method as long as you follow those right pieces of advice of, of slacking in that line in, it won't work in every venue you know if you've got you're fishing a match and there's someone next to you you can't obviously let it just run into their peg um you know but if you've got it in front of you uh, i fish matches at lindome on benny's um short in in the sort of autumn and the F1's like it's short, then you know you can do the same method but fishing just in front of you and they'll take off into the middle of the pond. So, you know, it can be a really, really successful and, and really, really good um, method to use. So, um, give it a go. Um, hopefully, this uh, little mini series is great for you. Um, we can, like I said, one a day for, for 14 days. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, if you want to join us on the Facebook group and see what we're up to. Um, on angling uh, for you if you want to join us on the instagram for photos at angling underscore for you that'd be fantastic and if you want to like share and subscribe even better and until the next one guys thanks a lot for watching and tight lines